can and stuff. Betsy. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? I was just waiting for my phone to load, so I thought I would sneak out and grab the rest of the fabric that's just been delivered to the front door. How are you this afternoon? Are you good? It's lovely to see you. I know it's been it's been a whole week, um, and I'm very conscious now. Of course, everyone's going. Is she all right? We haven't heard from her for a week, and I'm I'm very sorry. And yes, we're fine. And Rob's fine. We've just we had a lot we wanted to do, and sometimes you just I've just got to go. You know, I just we just need to take a moment. Uh, I don't know if you can. You probably can't tell or not, but my set is bigger. And the set is bigger, or it's wider, and that's because we've rearranged the whole studio and I can get the cameras further back so you get a better view. So it will change a lot over the next couple of weeks now, and I've actually got in the corner, I've got a naughty corner <laughs> that we can use as a little cosy set as well. So that's all exciting. Who is here this afternoon? Oh, you! Oh, heavens, you're all here. I better get, better get going. Good afternoon. Uh, let's do it romper room style, shall we? Good afternoon. Helen and Lynette and oh Diane is here thank you very much glad you like it it's been a long time coming we took the quilt on the back wall to the more wall craft a live show and uh, then we had to get our act together to do more kits when we got back and it just didn't happen so it's all done now good afternoon Sue oh hello Chris good afternoon Louise good afternoon Bob Sally's here too Steve's here. Can you tell? Can you tell he's here because he's put that little link in. So he's back from um, he's back from uh, Uni Adventures in the wilderness, if you like, up on the Murray. Uh, I don't I don't know if Steve's actually had a little bit of a look back at what we did last week. Does he actually know everyone that we had a Steve's coming back sale last week? He knew we had a sale, but. We had a little bit of a special thing, but I don't think he realised we named it after him. Uh, you need to look, Steve, because it's a very, very cool photo that Cass put up for our sale last week. Good afternoon, Marie Noel and Bernadette. Deidre's here as well. Welcome. And Judy. Yvonne. Yvonne. Yvonne is here. And you're a VIP today, Yvonne, because uh, Yvonne, Josie Wilson and Therese Parry were lucky winners of our last round of door prices so it was Yvonne and Josie remember we did the numbers but we didn't actually go and have a look who they were that won our two gorgeous essential purple packs uh, Teresa's Teresa's sitting out the back um, her beautiful gold pack with her new uh, straight stitch foot plate so I've got to send that off for her uh, yeah and we've got a couple more to draw today as well um, and Denise Kathy hello oh you're all beautiful you're all here uh, Jude, good thank you. I can see where you're going with that text that <laughs> started. Um, yes, thank you, Catherine. Yes, Steve got home okay. He looks gorgeous. He was here yesterday. He's working on textile pantry today after he's just done a whole heap of stuff for you and me on Chandler's Cottage website. Uh, Rob's good. Yeah, well, after the show, did we talk about it? Um, last Tuesday, I um, they rang and said, please come and get him. He's too well to stay the night. We haven't got a bed. Fine. Uh, long story short, we may or may not have been going through a Hungry Jack's drive through at 10 p.m. on Tuesday night. <laughs> and that wasn't for Rob. I just left you in a hurry. I was so excited to get him. I forgot to eat. That's my confessions to my Cruises Life girls, and I won't say any more. Um... You've, you're all you're all here. Wendy's here. Oh, that's nice. Hello, and Tina. All right, I'm just checking. Rhonda's in the boarding. Okay, you're all good. <laughs> oh, no, it was a howdy, everyone. Michelle Fisher needs to be here today because I'm going to show you and release to you her beautiful bag collection. Keezy, good afternoon. Violet. Violet is here. Violet, you are always welcome because that's my grandmother's name. Diana, Costa Rica, hello. Oh, Diana, you and I, we could talk all day about FedEx and European airspace at the moment, how my poor friend Maria is now to skin of her teeth going to get her Melba stock for the Sitcher show, literally. They're now saying they'll have it her Tuesday. She gets in the car at 7.30 Wednesday morning and we've been trying for a month to get stock in. 
I'm not going to sleep well till I know she's got it. Good afternoon, Diane. How are you today? All right. Which which Yvonne where? Which we did not you, Chapman. <laughs> it's sorry, Yvonne Collinson won the door prize. Um, but you're back in the draw, Yvonne, I'm sure. <laughs> you sit quietly. You're funny. Leonie, all right, can we, we could do this all day? Uh, Leonie, you can spell my name any, that's perfectly fine, absolutely fine, any way you like. All right, um, are we all good? Right, before we go any further, these were not on today's agenda, but Ash just dropped these off and Steve's got the list, so he's going to be putting them up and uh, we'll come back and talk about these Saturday afternoon. Just have a little bit of a bit of a discussion. Oh, my table's a bit wobbly. Because I got one side back up, Steve, and I couldn't get the other side back up without pulling everything down. So one side of the table is sitting on mm, rugs and mosaics from Constantinople. It's just the right height. One of my very, very precious books is under the table on one side. So they, these just came in. Just, just to give you a quick look. These... Um, and Robert Kaufman's changed their graphics on their bolt end stickers. Ah, look at that. Look at that. So this is blue. Blue and gold. You know we love our blue and gold. So I've been waiting for this to go with all those timeless treasures and things we've got out there. And of course it will go with a lot of the Robert Kaufman fusions. So we'll, Steve's uploading that one, these for us. For you and me. And then for the purple freaks. These. They look like, they look like chrysanthemums, or, yeah, they do. Love a little bit of dial smussel, chrysanthemums. Oh, it's just, what do you say? It's just purple, and it's beautiful. Look, look at that. Those flowers, they are, they're like little, um, little chrysanthemums they're probably they're probably up to about an inch and a half across so that's gorgeous and it's it's definitely iris blue there's three from this collection i would say i've got a lot more james you're not usually noisy oh you're a quiet gentleman oh you can be noisy as you like in your own space james i can't hear you from here so you could you could be watching us and have the music cranked right up that would be perfectly fine. You could be you could be mowing the grass with your headphones on. That would also be fine. I don't know why I thought of that. There's the purple one. The leaves, the leaves, the leaves. I don't I don't want to give you oh, I can give you a close up here. I don't want to give you a close up because the other side's all set up ready to show you. Which which camera's that too? Oh, we're upside down, Lisa. There we go. So see this green? It's it's minty green. I know, James. So you could be listening while oh that's right, no, not mowing the grass probably. But you could be doing anything while listening. You could be sewing while listening. That would be fine. Um Yes, Pam, very yummy purple. This okay, so this purple in here, the lighter of these lilac ones, that's gonna go with Robert Kaufman. Mm, it's amethyst, that little fusiony 6644. And this mint green in here, that goes with Patty in Robert Kaufman Batiks. And I know that because we had Patty out yesterday. It's very fresh in my head. For those in a quilter's life and who are going to join a quilter's life to do the geisha, the fabrics are chosen. Yes, we have finally made a start. The fabrics are chosen. Uh, the lot of them had been put away safely for a long time. They were all out yesterday, and we were choosing a few more coordinates, like Patty, um, 1895, Moff Hoffman Batik, and a few others to use with it. So that would go with those. But I'll bring those back out on Saturday afternoon for you. We're going to have a big chat about going back to our creative felt baskets and doing zips and things on Saturday afternoon and, and a few more other bits and pieces. So everything that I don't think we're going to fit into this afternoon, basically. Now, if we go to camera three, this one here, you're going to get a fright because there's a lemur in the photo. Good afternoon, Val. Did you get my email? I think you did. 
hope you did. So, there is a lemur in the photo. Now, this is not, well, it kind of does a bit, doesn't it? It detracts a bit. <laughs> it does detract just a little bit uh, from Michelle's beautiful pattern. But the reason there is a lemur in the photo is that it is Epilepsy Foundation Month. And this is my little lemur, and they are selling these to raise money for the Epilepsy Foundation. And he was purple, and he just did not go with the set, but he does go with one of our bag kits. So I had to pop him up. I was in my favourite op shop, which is the one in Parkdale, uh, where I buy lots of the little bits and bobs that I use for props and things for photos. And I walk in the door, and there is this table of purple lemurs. Now I have a thing for lemurs because of Trilo from Big Blue House. Uh, and uh, Emma's got him from Madagascar, that one. Anyway, I'm a tree low girl from when the boys were little. These are $10 each. So I said to the guys in the op shop, as I may or may not have been buying, Carlton Ware China Ware that they had, um, that I don't need, but I had to have it, that I would put these on our website for today to sell them today and not to complicate things. So you could class this little guy as a chewy checkout. Um, if you don't know what that means, Jimmy, that means that it's when you go the, through the supermarket and you don't feel adding the cost of a pack of chewing gum to the weight or the cost of your purchase. But we've put him on for today. So orders up till, <laughs> orders up till pretty much midnight tonight, you can order one of these little guys because uh, Steve will be picking them up from the Parkdale Epilepsy opportunity shop on his way here tomorrow so orders all in by midnight we will be able to honor for you i just i he makes me happy and i'm not a purple girl but he makes me happy i know it's going to a good cause uh, designed in australia with love and care obviously for ten dollars they have not been made here but he makes me happy and i just think for ten I'm going to have him sitting just in the gift cupboard so when a little person's not feeling well or I'm going to see a little person or mm, with my boys maybe Phil, hey Steve, a big person that loves soft toys, but you know, you just when you need a happy present to put in the mail, he weighs literally nothing, he's like a hundred grams I think, um, I may or may not have just put a bit of purple fluff in my coffee because I've been playing with him a lot, but anyway, that is why... Mate, you don't. You just don't go on the stand. I'm going to. I'm going to leave you over here. Uh, Ginny, I don't think Ginny's seen him yet, so that'll be hilarious. And you can't have mine. He's mine. Uh, now, other things got will have coming up at the Deafness Foundation pins as well. So um, I've talk, chatted with the guys there. And they're getting me some samples of which ones we can get, so that we can have a look and see. Um, how they fit in with the colours of everything that we've got in stock. But, moving on, Michelle Fisher, uh, we wrote a very nice little spiel about you in your 10 page long pattern that has taken uh, three trial makes to test the pattern and get us there. In fact, there's probably a few more than that along the way. So, let me show you this gorgeous bag and they are up on the website now so on the website you have got the opportunity to buy let, let's not let's just move the purple out of the way for a minute because oh look, and the lemur mate you gotta go over here sit sit there that's it okay you have several options available to you of what you would like to do so you can order the pattern now and print it now and start making it this afternoon so it's available as a digital download. So Michelle lives about five minutes from me. There's a plane going over the top now. It will go over her place in another five minutes time if that landing at Maribyrn Airport. Michelle's beautifully talented. If you have been to our textile exhibitions, you will have seen everything she does. Remember those hot, I've still got them, of course, those hot stiletto shoes covered in Melba, the stubby holders that she, such a creative mind and she, won the first prize in our bag challenge last year. Okay, front flap, how funky is this? It goes down this way, and then when you open it up, the pocket runs this way. So this is actually a pocket in here. In the lining in our kits, I'm gonna say it now in case I forget later, in the lining in our kits, 
please be aware that we did the first sample uh, with uh, Melbourne fans, but as we moved on, we have switched over now and the kits are actually going out with under the Australian sun gum leaves, just so it all matches in together. And also we don't have any cream at the moment in the fans, it's being reprinted. So front pocket, you've got another divided two pockets in there and then you've got your full feature fabric on the back. There are so many things that you can do with this bag besides doing it in feature fabrics like we've done uh, and I've got a couple of other ones for you that we've kitted up. But just stop and think for a minute. If you love a sashiko, your other option is plain contrast, sashiko on here, sashiko here. Get stuck in, applique sampler girls, plain fabrics, 3D flowers, uh, one of the ones off our Melba fan here, little, little uh, flowering gums across here. Lots and lots of options for you to embellish your bags and if you're into mache embroidery, sky's the limit. Then, also in the pattern, you've also got, uh, you've also got your purse. So this is your clutch. We call it the bow clutch. So you've got a lovely little sash of your feature fabric across the front. You're going to zip it if you wish. So that fits beautifully inside your retro bag. Then you've also got in the pattern the instructions for making your glasses case. So that can go in two places, well three places. You can, it will nest inside your bow clutch. You can just pop it straight inside your bag, but it will also go beautifully in that little pocket in the front and sit there nicely. And then that goes over there. So that is, uh, that's your main one that is featured on the pattern that's on the website. Then, oh, I really, actually I want to show you, I want to show you this first before I show the other ones, because you're going to hop on and have a look at, the, <laughs> at it and you go, holy dooly Lisa, really? That price for that kit? Yes. <laughs> Chains, yes you are one of the girls. If you were here you're one of the girls. And you're just going to have to wear that for me until I remember. Uh, if John's here as well later, he'll slap you around a bit and remind me, ladies and gentlemen, and Peter, and the guy, and, and Nathan, and everyone. Okay, so, but before you go, Lisa, really, $79.50 for the kit, I want to show you what's in your kit, if I can get that sit there. All right, so, in your kit, you've got 90 centimetres of your feature fabric, and this goes for all the kits. You've got 40 centimetres of your contrast, so in this classic Australian kit, that's your black. You've then got 75 centimetres of your lining. Now, I hope you've got your calculator out because you're going to work out, you're, pretty much, you're getting the pattern for free. And the pattern is either 1950, if we send it to you, there's 10 pages, there's colour, there's a whole heap of stuff going on, uh, and it's a bit cheaper, of course, if you print it out yourself. Um, then you've also got 25 centimetres of rubber foam batting. So that's in there as well, and that's the extra wide. That's in there. You've also got violin in the kit. So you're not going to need anything except thread and your basic sewing kit and your machine to get started. You've also got pellen. All the pellen that you need is all in the kit. So I'll pop that back on there. You've also got your zip for your bow clutch. You've got your frame. Now I'll talk about the frames because they're now available separately as well. So you've got the frame in there as well. He's valued at $9.50 on his own. And you've got your magnetic snap. So all of that is in, everything is in there. So you don't have to then go back to the website and buy bits and other pieces and everything. I've put it all in. So that's, that's that one. It's there. So you... And I suppose you've got to look at it that normal bag kit is usually, well, from me, $50. So on top of that, for an extra $30, you've got the bow clutch and you've got the glasses case. But on top of that, you've got the pattern and you've got all of your batting and your uh, 
interfacing and pallum that you need. So it's all in there together. So if I, if I take, I didn't put the overhead camera on. Do you need it? I don't think so. I think, I think we'll get away without it. All right, so if I put that back there, I'm going to put the frame back there, and I'm going to put the magnetic snap back, then we can do the swap in. I'm going to show you the kit before I show you the sample. Is that naughty? That's a bit naughty, isn't it? It's up hanging behind me anyway. So lining, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous contrast. This was a, this is, I was say was, because I haven't put it up by the meter on the website because it's held for the kits. It's, it's strobing on the camera a little bit because it's a woven, beautiful woven cotton by Robert Kaufman and they've weaved the finest gold lurex through it. So it will behave like a cotton fabric for you, but it's got a little bit of a shimmer to it. And then you've got your 90 centimeters of under the Australian sun floral, this time in the pink and teal on top. So I'll just, oh, my, zippy, my zip's missing from here. There is a zip, of course there is a zip. Okay, so that's the kit. And this is the sample. Uh, M made up this one, made the bag yesterday, and she didn't, she didn't start it until after lunch, and it was, it was done. Okay, she's a bit of a speedster, but if we take what Emma does in half a day, I do truly believe you can make the whole collection in a day. I, I really do, and I'm, I'm out to actually prove it to myself. If you're not doing, you know, hand sewing and things on it. From go to woe, definitely. It's a, day, a weekend project, day project. It's a bit stylish. Mum's going to want one, isn't she? <gasps> Ooh, the French linen. Oh, I say... Well, oh, that's got to come back out. We'll have to play with that. Definitely. Oh, yeah, definite. Oh, that's just stopped me in my tracks now. I'll have to go play with that after. Because that mum would, yeah. Right, this one. Now, I'm quickly flipping this open because we have not sewn on your magnetic snap. That's, that's an option for you if you want to put it on. It's in your kit. But we're suggesting you actually, if you want one, you're going to pop it here. The weight of the flap does hold the flap down on its own. The other option you could also do, if you're going to make a couple of them, or this in another bag, you know those gorgeous um, sew-on magnetic snaps that we've got? They come in a pair in that pack with the satchel bag. One of those here would definitely make a statement. I could do black on the French linen, couldn't I? Sorry. Inside, very, very pretty, with fluff, very, very pretty, bow clutch. So you can see you get a lovely, you do, it's not the fluff, you get a really lovely contrast with the pink inside. I was panicked, for, panicked for the last two days about misplacing one of the parts of these sample kits because between the three kits, I had not I had moving moving pieces. I had nine things going on all together. So that's the little glasses case that we put together. When you when you actually cut it all out, you you I would if you're going to cut it all in one go and do it as one whole project, you'll start with the retro bag, go to the bow, and then go to the glasses case, and you'll find you can be really really frugal as well if you do it that way um, with all of your fabrics and then that just sits in. If you uh, are out with your um, sewing machine and doing alphabets, I've just had a thought, if you're making this for someone, along the top of that pocket, you, you just want to stitch their name, don't you? Just just so when they open it up, it's got their name there. Just there, there's Michelle across here. So that's that set. Now we've also got Giving you the full plug to start with. Good afternoon, Ruthie. Not long now and daylight saving will be over here and we'll be t an hour closer to each other again. <laughs> yes, well, your mother would love one of those bags, Christine. So chop, chop. She would. Jen would love one. Um, who else is here? Jill's here. Deb Bird's in the building. Hello. And Deb Rumble as well. All right. 
This is for the Butterfly Freaks. Oh, that so clashes, doesn't it, with the back of the set? Let's, let's do this as a close-up instead. I think, we, I think we might need to change that. No, that one. This is for the Butterfly Friends Amongst Us and the Purple Girls. Now, um, you know how I said about moving parts? Yes, so the glasses case. Can we not talk about it? Can I just talk about the fact that definitely in your kit you will have enough fabric and the frame to make your glasses case as well and don't ask me about the glasses case because I did start to make it and I and I was hurrying and I did the dimensions wrong and I haven't had a chance to redo it so trust me when I say good afternoon Petra trust me when I say yeah it, it's all there you've got the pattern you've got all the fabric and the frame in your kit but we've only got four of these and I've also pulled the fabric out for this because again, when we first made this one, it we we didn't we we did it as a test run and we didn't really think ahead, very naughty of us and, and not like us at all, to make sure that we had enough fabric to kit it if we wanted to. So we stashed enough of this to do well the, there's enough just for just for four kits. We stashed enough of this to do four kits. We did not stash enough of the uh, white butterfly fabric inside this bag. So we had to choose another fabric to use for the kits. Um, these sitting on Steve's piles to cut your kits tomorrow. Cutting to order. Doesn't that sound flash? But it is It is the, the fact that's happening. I've chosen this beautiful Robert Kaufman one with the little floral on it because it's a gorgeous rich cream and it does pull up the lovely creams that are in this stripe. So that's what's going in for your lining. You don't see it on the outside of the bag. And, you know, I, it's, it's all very well to say it in hindsight now, but I do actually like it better than the stark white background on the butterflies. So that's that one. So that's it. And when they are gone, they are gone. Oh, sorry. I'm just, if you've got a stash, hang on, we have to look at this completely sidetracked. If you have a stash of stripe, I'm just, you might want to, um, I actually think that would work. I do think that would work. Let me just measure. Oh, it works. I don't, I just want to show you without you watching me get up on the ladder and turn the camera on. Okay, three, the three of the stripes, one, two, three, perfectly fit the width of the flap. So if I flick this up onto here, why did we not, I don't know. Look, look it perfectly fits, it's the same width that's freaky. It does happen a lot to me, and it's probably to do with, you know, working in my happy space. But just to just to give you a little, you know, heads up. Heavens above, who would know that was the case? Never even thought about it. So there you go. You could use it if you've got it in your stash. You're going to download it. Hi, Lisa from. Hi, Lisa from where? Oh, you're in Ballarat. You get around, Deb, and I mean that in the nicest possible way, but you're always somewhere different. Oh, of course, um, Steve, can you please, I forgot, can you please tag, please, Stevie, can you please tag our Under the Australian Sun scarves in the pink and teal and make sure they're down to nine, 1950 again today because you, how can I not? How can I not mention how to accessorise so you can have your scarf to match your kit if you, uh, you know, want the whole the whole ensemble together. Okay, so I'm going to hang this back up here for now so you all know that. Now, do not order the pattern if you are a Quilters Life member because remember you get that as part of your membership. And if you are not a Quilters Life member yet, purely based on that pattern... I would join up for at least a month. You can join up, you can leave whenever you like, but I would join, give it a go, give it a try, because uh, you're immediately 
going to save yourself $9.50 or $7.50 in being a member and it's easy to get in and out. Okay, so, oh, do you know what? There's an email here I've just seen. Can I read it? No, 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 no. Sorry. Um, we have problems. Oh, please. We, we have problems. Be able to redirect at her end to show. Um, getting stuff into Spain for Maria for the show because uh, the FedEx have a little bit of a limitation of what airspace they're using at the moment. And that was my... Um, Korea, we've been trying for three weeks to get stuff into Spain. Now, we're talking Spain, we're not talking Poland, we're not talking Ukraine or Russia, but still, we are having trouble getting stuff over there. Okay, now, I want to talk to you today, well, first of all, there's this thing on the back wall, but also, I want to go through the bow clutch and the glasses case for you and just give you some other ideas because investing in that pattern is not just going to be about hello Natasha <laughs> it's not just going to be about having a full pattern and making all three you're actually now the think long sound like Natasha now because she's watching you're investing who said that Nat was it, it was Adam wasn't it you're investing. I'm sure it was him that said it on the craft store. Investing in a pattern that gives you three things to make. One's a major project for you, but the other two can be made just separately for you to make up as gifts and things as well. So I want to talk to you about them and give you some different ideas for them. Um, so I'll do that in a tick. I'm jumping all over the place a bit now. The quilt on the back wall. This is the third in our series of Charming Australia. Again, Quilters Life Girls, you have this pattern. You own it. It's yours as part of your membership. Uh, also, there are some lovely ladies who visited us at Marble Craft Alive that also own the pattern and own this kit now. And if they don't own this one, they own the red and ivory one. We are out of the black and green at the moment. I am so working on that for you. I'm hoping we can pull some more off. You know what one of the problems is? This. The ivory and green until Lisa, whoever she is, reprints it, uh, we have a stock and we haven't got anything. There is a charm pack that you purchase, so it's tagged for today, and it has 47 and a half inch squares in it. Don't even think about it, Natasha. I am not, <laughs> it's not happening. Don't know. You can have the pattern for your girls and cut your own. I can see her brain work. I can, I can feel her brain working from the other side of the world. So you've got all of these. You've got three gum leaves. You've got three flowering gums. And then you've got the feature floral. So they are all in there. And then you're going to take those, do your half square triangles. Really nice. I don't want to say simple. Clean line, easy, quick instructions. I never want to say simple. I don't, I don't want to sort of suggest that if you... Um, you know, it's only suitable to you because you're a beginner. I don't want to say that. If you need a quick, easy quilt to whip up, even if it's not with a charm square pack, scrappy quilt, it's a great pattern. And the way to get the pattern, as I said, it's another reason for $10 to join a quilter's life, or the pattern comes in the kit. And on the website, with this one and, and the others that fall under this category in pre-cuts as a charm pack, Steve's actually popped in there if you want to make the quilt up. When you buy your charm pack, you're going to pop over into fabrics and it tells you which where to go to do that and buy a metre and a half of the border stripe because that's what you need to make the whole chamol up. Natasha, do you want these for your girls? I can send them over if you want them. We can talk about that later <laughs> if you want to. Oh, Marie's been to a sewing group lunch. Oh, how lovely is that? I put that fabric away for you too, Marie. All right, so this has been fussy cut down. And I really enjoyed this. And it was so much fun at Morwell because I had the three versions up on the wall. And with each of them, I had chosen different um, sections of the stripe to cut for the sashing. So on this one, 
I have alternated between the pea flower and the grevillea for the centre and I use the chorea out on the edges and the calistamin and I'm just saying all of the proper words for it now so that Natasha learns them. <laughs> so not bottle brush, calistamin for the top and the bottom. But with the other ones I switch them all around. So you've got you'll you've got enough to play with to really have a good go. So I think I think Steve and I we've only cautiously put up six of the charm packs. Um, if they sell out we're going to go and have a look and see if we can get pull a little bit more of this out. The whole topsy turvy world is happening here at the moment between retail and wholesale, which I've told you about because we are relaunching kicking off the textile pantry again because I'm designing and doing all stuff so we I've had to stand in, in in our storage in where we hold all our fabric and everything and go how much for Chandler's Cottage and how much for the textile pantry because it's like Christmas Day how much Christmas pudding do I give my that family versus that family it, it, it literally is my two my two families and they kind of cross over in the middle so Chandler's Cottage are all of you, but then I have another extended family for all my shops, like Natasha, like Maria in Spain, um, uh, like Di in Costa Rica. That's just a general hint. We need to put fabric in Costa Rica. But then my shops all over Australia as well and in America. So, you know, just there's that happening. But I'm, I think Steve might let me scrounge another half a bolt so we can do more. We can do more if we need to. Okay, so I'm going to leave the, this bow one out and we'll talk this big thumping kids. Let's let's have a look at um, we shall have a look at these little glasses cases first. Because I don't have one that goes with this bag, but also I, you know, as the week goes on, you chop things up and you look at what you've got left on the shelf and you get a bit sad over some things that you've run out of. Now, a lot of you are waiting, including Marie, on more of the collage fabrics to come in because Marie wanted, like others, more of the purple, which we don't have at the moment. But I had a look at what we had still available which wasn't much in these beautiful fabrics my distributor has promised me another full set so missing from these is the purple another full set of these i just don't know when I, I i'm assuming it's not christmas so we'll get those in but i have taken pretty much what's left of the stock there's only some skinny bolts left really skinny bolts left in a couple of the colors i think i've got a little bit of Yellow, orange, pink and red left, like a metre, metre and a half. And the rest are now in the 25 centimetre pre-cut pack, so you've got six in there. And I looked at those and I thought, well, if I was making one of these with a matching glasses case for a funky person or a, or a funky young person, let's not discount ourselves from those group of people. Um, like Natasha, I would probably make mm, an orange one, I think, just to really put it out there. But if you, you know, if you want to do a young person one, I thought, wow, wouldn't they look cool in these fabrics? And uh, the other fabric that I wanted to make one up in, I'm going to have to turn that overhead camera on, aren't I? Is is mine. So I also wanted one in Hampton Stripe with the back panel going this way and the bow going this way and I'm going to set it onto black but I'm not going to set it onto solid black because, because I've got, and we learnt this way back with uh, Elliot's garden quilt, because the black in my Hampton Stripe is really it look it is shaded but oh my goodness so thinly that you'd never know it's pretty much a solid black if i put this onto black magic i don't have much contrast so it's better for me to put it on a slightly marbled black to work with 
and then the gold is going to be in my lining but also in my goodie bag can you hear them oh no that's not them where are they our large buttons came back in so I thought and I can hear the designer five minutes away going don't mess with the bag you've just launched the bag I know I know Michelle but I want to have a go I just thought I really liked the idea of having a button on here as well and um, you know what else goes here really important to remember all of those beautiful brooches that you have in the cupboard that you never use that were yours your mum's or your grandmother's right there so that when you go out you've got your beautiful little bit of bling sitting on your bag I know we've done that before we've had little brooch bags and things but don't forget to use your brooches they don't just have to go here pop them on a bag on a clutch and wear it out as an accessory so we'll get all of this together I've got a cutting mat underneath oh yes and here we go now you can if you just want to buy your glasses case on its own frame sorry I should say you can so you've got your instructions on how to make it in here as well so these are 950 and they come with your frame with that all done in there so this means that if you want to use all of your own stash with your digital download pattern the Madison collection you can do that and then you can just order your frame if you want to on its own now we pack I know it's a double up it is a double up on the pattern but uh, these of course are also going to be available through the textile pantry so you can nicely ask your local patchwork store if you want to buy and support locally to give us a buzz and uh, we can send them and sell them to them and you can buy it locally and then you don't have to pay the freight all, all of that whole scenario now goes on all right now what am I going to give you to look at <laughs> while I <laughs> Michelle says mess all you like you might regret that later you really really might what am I going to give you to look at while I get on the ladder to distract you from from looking at my lanky so we'll just we'll just set up the bag I don't think I can avoid you seeing my lanky legs let's, let's just sit the sit the lima there and um okay I need you to name my lima all right this was not part of the plan please name the lima while I get up on the ladder it doesn't have to start with L and no you can't call it Lisa uh, you could name it after your favorite um, person watching today that would be Jimmy wouldn't it I reckon all right cameras on how bad's the set look I went the other way so you can't see my legs I'm not telling but that's true so I don't know what it is about actually that's not bad can I put my hand in oh it's a bit over oh it's got nothing to do with the zoom it's got everything to do with where the camera is um I don't know why but when Rob's here and he flips around trying to rearrange cameras while we're live it does my head in but but only when he does it give me a minute okay I think that's going to do I don't think the ladder's in sight. Talk about change things on the fly. How did we go? Okay. That's it. All right. Done. Oh, yes. This is to remind me. We have rearranged the way that we sell zips to you without asking you your permission or anything. We just did it. Um, we now, you know, you've cut your, I was going to say cut your teeth, pun, no pun included, on our zip sets. And so what we've done now is we've actually, <laughs> I'm going to read all the names now. Um, you've cut your teeth on them, you know how they all work, and a lot of you have asked us now, I really want the black zip, but I, but I want three of this with it, or I want four of that, or, or I want to mix and match them up. 
So we've realized it's time to set you free with the zips. And to be honest, um, it makes our life easier for selling them on the textile pantry as well. So our zips now all come in pre-cut lengths of just the zip. So Steve's put them all under today's banner for you as well. So you can just have a look. So now you just buy your zip as a pre-cut one metre piece. The debate was on for ages about whether to pre-cut or not. But we have come to the conclusion after having them for a couple of months that no one needs a zip bigger than a metre. So, and we really, you know, it's either going to be a large cushion where you cut it in half, three bags, like the clutch purse, it's going to cut into three. So, you now buy your zip by the metre length, pre-cut, um, ready to go. So, you come in a little pack like this. And then, you now buy all of your pools as a set of three. So, they come in a set of three. But they're all individual, so you can choose which ones you want to um, order. So I've just pulled out so you three straight or three snowflake or three yes and taking all those photos took a long time yesterday because they're so shiny it was very hard to get a nice photo and you'll see some of them are got a little halo around them because I've had to overexpose them. But now you can mix and match as you wish and buy in bulk and it will all be and I think it's time. I do think it's time to do that for you because, you know, now we've done lots of demos and again we're coming back and doing more on a Saturday afternoon. So um, I think you'll be, I think you'll be fine. Absolutely fine. All right. So we need a cutting mat, girls. And you. Okay. Up we go. All right. What are we talking about with leaners? Fiona, why do we have Sally the lemur? Lolita, yeah, that gets it. <laughs> you fine. See, I knew if I gave you something, you'd run with it. Oh, I like Felix. Oh, Yvonne, I do like Felix. Selena de Lima, Larry. Yeah, that's a girl. I do like Felix. If Dale, if you've just joined us, I'm sorry. It's all it's all silly stuff here. Alright, uh, I've got my overhead. So, we are going to have a look. At all of this. Now, I'm actually going to, the pattern is so fresh off, I haven't even bothered to download it, but I do know the dimensions off by heart for the bow clutch. So, we've got the bow clutch to do, and we've also got the, um, glasses case. Where will we start? I want to get them set up and I want to give you a couple of little tips on them. We we might do the glasses case first. Let me just find where this is one here. Okay. Hey Steve, can you just text me, just so I don't make a complete numb nut of myself, can you text me a photo of the requirements for the bow clutch. I'm pretty sure I know them off by heart, but if I mess them up live on Facebook, I'm going to kill myself. That's how fresh the pattern is. Literally, we signed it off at quarter to two. So this is my... Ta -da, here is my frame. We need three things. We need pallen. Now, keep it thin. Don't go thick. None of your leftovers, uh, foam batting or anything. Keep this super thin because you just want a little bit of protection for your glasses but you don't want it too thick and you've got to be able to get that batting up into yeah we cleaned up give me a minute i've got to get a rotary cutter you've got to get the batting up into the frame Now, I came, I came across a couple of little tricks with that, and I have been watching what other people do. Thanks, Steve. Alrighty, so these are cut down to the size you need. So that's there. 
and these are seven and a half. On your instructions, you've got all of this, all of your dimensions. With the Madison Collection, instead of putting all separate requirements and, and trying desperately not to confuse you and us, we have done one main instruction list at the front of the pattern and that gives you everything. That reflects what you've actually got in your uh, kits. What did I say for Natasha? Orange. I'm loving the orange. Look at, look at the orange. See what I mean? Look at the orange against that. Because this, this is not full black and we talked about all of this when we first launched these fabrics with dark greys and things. It's a marbled grey black, so this is perfect. So I'm going to sneak, just sneak, enough off the ends of my piece. Like this. Now while I'm doing this, do you remember I told you I asked you nicely, I didn't tell you, I asked you nicely to pop in your diaries the 14th and the 15th of May. And we had a little bit of a joke and I do remember that Megan Lancaster, it will take her 525 kilometres to actually get to the recreation hall at Garfield. Um, <laughs> I do remember that. And we talked about Karen Stiles and Margaret Upston and I holding a little soiree and it was all going to be wonderful well you know what it's now all real it is real and if you go to trybooking.com.au and search needleworkers soiree it's there and you can book a ticket i haven't done any advertising yet we haven't done any of that but we sort of we had to uh, get it all ready and up on there before we officially tell you about it. So this is unofficial. Before we tell you about it, because there's no point in telling you all about it unless you could book. So if you wanted to go and have a look on trybooking.com.au after the show, and just it's just got the basic information there of what you need to know, what you need to bring. Um, we have set up the bookings in tables, so. If there's a few of you that wanted to all come together, you can book all on the one table. So, um, yeah, it's there. And if you've got any questions, you just email me. I'll, I'll be putting it in a newsletter. And Margaret will, and Karen will. So is this where I say, get in first, if you want to come, before all of their girls book. Oh, that's really rude, isn't it? That's just so rude. Very rude. Okay, I'm going to use. Did I cut that right? I did. It just looks bigger. There you go. I've actually cut my lining for my glasses case. Yeah, Robbie's going to have to move that camera um, from the black because I just think they look stunning together and that's going to be my frame. So that's cut. Now, Steve sent to me. Yes, Fiona, you can come to one day only. So when you go in, you'll be able to uh, book Saturday and or Sunday. They are separate events on booking.com and each day is $75 and each day includes a delicious morning tea and Karen and Margaret and I are designing exclusive projects from, uh, for each day, so they're different each day. We can't switch them all around. There'll be three, <laughs> yes, Natasha, there will be three um, projects for the Saturday and then three different ones for the Sunday. And it's going to be awesome fun. All right, I'm going to give you a little tip right now for this pattern. When you go in and have a look, you will see two measurements for the bow and for the back of the bag and cut the widest one first and trim the other down. It will make sense to you when you download it. So I'm going to move this over here. All right, I'm just doubling all my fabric up so it's easier to cut. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm out of shot, folks. There you go. Just need to, I either need to shimmy 
the camera forward or shimmy the table back. So these little pieces, well they're not that little are they, they're all 25 centimetres that come in this pack of pre-cuts of the collage fabric, they are, each one of them is going to make you a glasses case and a bow clutch. I worked it out, folks, isn't that super exciting? I think it is. So we're cutting down one piece that's going to make our bow. Oh, I have to choose. No, I don't want it to have to choose. I hate this bit with this fabric because you've got to... Ugh. There is no way to choose or be happy or fussy cut, is there? All right, so I've got my gerbera here and then it goes through to this. There's a fair bit of black happening here with my little mouse. So I think I'm going to make this the back of the bag, and if I can, oh, that would be super cool. I'm going to make this the center of my bow. All right, so if I get my roller, I'll probably need my other one. Where's my creative grids? Okay, my creative grids isn't in here either. All right, we... Do you know, I sort of, you think the place is clean on the surface um, and then you start going through everything that's in the room. And I started to get quite upset about finding five rotary cutters. Um, there were several things. Why can I not find any black thread? Because all five reels are in the studio. And I really, really thought that's just not good enough Lisa you need to be more professional than that but when I went to uh, put up today's search word today's search word is show 30 and that means that we have done 30 shows in this little room heavens uh, actually more than that because we've had a few extra ones I used a different word for so I let myself off a bit after that 30 shows. So this room hasn't, hasn't done too bad. We have actually been home, home based now, out of the warehouse for six months this week. Where'd that go? I don't, I don't know. Um, it just disappeared. So, uh, yeah, time flies. I, have, I did tell you, didn't I, what happened that week we decided to move home. I'm sure I did that we were just, yeah, we might, we might start try just working from home now and just see if we've got everything. And then, um, I'm sure I told you, after the event, that Rob rang me that morning and said, we've got a problem. And one of his um, partners at work had COVID. So we went from, yeah, we'll finish the warehouse clean up over two weeks. We finished it at midnight that night. We all went and got tested and isolated at the warehouse, packed it all up. We were home and we kept doing Facebook and everything for you in isolation for two weeks and we did it and it was and it was fine and Australia Post our lovely postmaster came and picked up do we want the little bit of word orange at the top we probably do don't we um, picked up for us and it was all fine because we didn't have COVID all right Mm -hmm. a lot of fun with that didn't we and then there was Lisa and the two hour show on Boxing Day with it <laughs> alright so this is going to be uh, this is the back panel so that's going to be really funky and you know a lot of interest going on there so you'll be able to sit and have a look at it I think you make this up and you wear it out and when little people at the table start misbehaving because they're bored. One, I spy on the back of your purse. Two, throw them a purple lemur. That'll be the go. All right, so I'm going to pop that aside. That's for me to make up later. I'm not going to bother you with showing you that bit now because that's all done. I want to talk about this boat. I've got what would be classed as an ice cream headache because I've got a fan blowing straight on my 
face. So with this little guy now, according to the instructions from the designer, Michelle Fisher, we iron over a double seam, quarter inch seam on here. So I'm just going to grab my little iron. And Emma, which was not, not a soft sell, not a hard sell, not trying to sell, yesterday came out and said to me, where, oh where, is the hot press ruler? And of course, it had all been packed up. So I went and grabbed her one because she was a smarty pants and thought about how cool it would be to use one of these for this particular task. She is the gadget queen here. So these ones have... Oh yeah, that's pretty good. So this one is in imperial measurements. I think one of the first ones we got in uh, was not, was it? It was metric. See, this is so cool. So I can line this up on here and it will press over exactly a quarter inch and it's super hot. Well, my iron's super hot and I can iron with a super hot iron my straight hem and it's it's kind of it's it's a bit furry so it sticks very nicely I don't have to worry about melting anything or marking anything nice uh, yes so we are planning on not telling you what projects <laughs> we are doing at the retreat. Um, we, it's a real toss-up, isn't it? Whether to make it a surprise or whether to make it, you know, really well known what we're doing. I know that Margaret is working on hers at the moment. I have seen, I have had, I should say, a sneak peek. Oh my goodness. I don't know. You may not get any help from me on the day because that's the whole idea is that three of us walk the room and help you with your project. So if you're working on Karen's, Karen will walk past and say, how are you doing? Do you need any help? And then I'll come past and go, what are you doing? Doing Karen's and stuff. No, I'm not saying that. Um, I'll walk past and if you're working on one of mine, I'll be able to help you. I am very excited. I will tell you, mine does include my small Melba floral in the brand new silver grey version coming. So I was very excited the other day that Japan said, yes, Lisa, we will have it to you in time to make up your samples and make up the kit. So I was very, very happy about that. So one of mine will have silver Melba. So it's, it's a similar, I suppose it's similar colouring to the Melba Scalloped Fan, it, but it's a bit paler and it's the little floral, so it's very delicate, very, very delicate. And uh, it involves a little bit of reverse applique with polyfuse, that's all I'm saying. Right, so now we've got these two ironed under. We've got nice little diagrams in this project as well, because when you get to assembling your bag, if you've made a walker bag before, you'll be absolutely fine. But it, it's all of that stuff that Emma and I have done with you before about putting zips into the top of purses. Uh, and it was on the day, it will be up on YouTube, it was on the day that we did, you know, this stuff, which we're coming back to with a couple of other applications on Saturday afternoon. So in that day when we did all the zip stuff, you've got all of that sandwiched together with your zip for the front and for the back. All of that's in there with some really nice little diagrams of which bits, which I'm, I'm sure you'll be fine. Um, I am going to do a full bow clutch demo for a quilt's life, uh, but oh, I won't do the whole thing today, but I will do it for there as well. But I know you'll, you'll, you'll get it. You will get it. All right. So this is going to be our bow. So that's going to turn into that. And what it actually says to do in Michelle's pattern is to do a little hand gather through here. 
so that you get this little bit occurring. And then these two sides actually get inserted into your side seams on your purse. So what I want you to think about, and this is all about different applications as well, if this is your bow that's going to go on your clutch, here I've got this fabric and that's going to be great. And I've got a couple of options that I can do. I can make this little sleeve that goes through here. And if I'm going to do that for this particular bag, I might actually do that in the black. So in the, in the actual instructions and in the pictures you'll see, we've used the same fabric for this band with all of them. But if you really wanted to make a button stand out here, I would actually do that little, that little, you know what I'm trying to say, that little band across. I would do that in black and then I'm going to make my button out of the orange. And that to me would be really cool. Okay, so, because this is my bit I've got left. See, no waste, absolutely no waste. All good. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you, have you made one of these? I'm asking you now, because M did it, didn't she, the other day? Which, oh, I have to choose. I hate this bit where I choose. All right. I think we could have a bit of a butterfly. We could have the little, okay, I got it. We're doing the head. We're doing this little head here. I don't suppose Emma left me a Frixium pen. No, of course not. Of course she didn't leave me one. I'm saying her name in vain. It was probably my fault. I had great satisfaction when Steve walked in with Emma yesterday that honestly not one bolt of fabric, not one basket of patterns or haberdashery was in the same place as when he left, or Emma for that matter. I'm, I'm cutting myself a generous circle. It is quite interesting on the back of the um, instructions it says to cut a circle, but cast note, it's actually a square, which is quite funny. Alright, so we'll cut this out. We'll just use little scissors. I think, you know, I, I've got, probably like you, loads and loads and loads of little embellishment bits and bobs on the Never Never Judy Vermeulen, just saying. And, um... <laughs> And all my, you know, zips and my tassels and, and they are lovely, absolutely lovely to have. But the one thing, the most flexible thing to have as an embellishment, bits and bobs, as Natasha would say, in your drawer, are your self-covered buttons. Because then you can literally customise your embellishment. I don't know that I've got it quite there. You can customise the embellishment to suit. Okay. So I'm going round and I'm actually popping the fabric over the teeth. And you want it to stay. I have let this slip a little bit. If you really want to be precise, truth be known, I'll probably make another one later. Yeah, I will. I haven't got her face in the middle, but I've got to get round and get all of this over. Come on, in you go, there we go, in like that. So it's all in, and then we grab our back and we slide that ball over. Now what I should have what I should do, do as I say, not as I do. Please go through and glue over as well. And at least glue over on the it's a bit embarrassing, folks. I haven't got it all in. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. 
um, at least glue over the top. I need my tail as all. Oh, which reminds me, they've come in at the distributor. I've got to ring and get those. All right, I'm going in. That's one little bit there. You know what would help? I'll put my glasses on. Okay, then when that's all on and you're happy with it, do not look closely at mine. You're going to get your cotton reel and sit that over the top and press it in. And I didn't do it. Ugh. Go in. Oh, am I up the wrong way? Oh, that would help. What a numb nut. There we go. It's like watching paint dry, isn't it? Okay. On, on, on. I need my um, pliers to do that properly. But there you go. This is roughly what my button's going to look like. So I need to get my pliers, my tailors all, and just put them under there, a little bit of glue. I know a lot of you know how to do this better than I do. And you just want to push all of that in. I actually don't want to clip him in now. I'm stopping myself doing it because I want to go back and use this one and get it right. Okay, so there's my little button. So that's going to sit over the top of my bow on here. So you can just see just see what I mean. Just adding that little extra bit of detail is going to make a little bit more of a wow factor. And then of course if I dragged out my grandmother's brooch collection, I'll probably have one that would go on this bag. And you will, if you pop on a brooch or a button, I would recommend coming right through to your lining to secure it in place. So I would sew my button in so it goes all the way through and then it's going to hold that bow in place a little more because once you start putting a brooch or something on there, you're going to weight it down a little bit and you don't want that to start falling down. So just, just go through the whole lot and pop it on there. So I... I'm definitely going to finish this one off. Now, these two little double seams that are here, these are also going to get top stitched down before we move any further. And then you just do a little bit of a finger press and fold them under just a little bit more before they go on and get gathered onto your uh, clutch, bow clutch. So, aside of this fabric as well, just, just have a little think for me about what else you, you could use here. If you've got plain fabric, if you've got leftover sashiko fabric or a woven fabric, you could actually just do a whole series of beautiful little stitches across a straight piece. And then it will pull down to the middle and it's going to pull in all of them into the middle, but you'll get a lovely radiating effect of uh, threads and colours and um, stitches all going out from the centre. And the same goes for the little band across here. You could be stitching this as well. If you're not a hand person, get onto your machine and start stitching out all those decorative stitches and use those here for the bow. And then on the back as well, you'll be able to do them horizontally or vertically on there. All right. So that's going to be, that's going to take lots and lots of time and fun and everything. Where did I put? I'm going to get the sewing machine out for these in a minute. The other one that I'm going to make up as well for myself, and I just want to show you this again, are these fabrics. So stripes, as you can see on here, look really, really effective. But we've messed around with it. So um, what I would suggest... I nicked a little bit off there, didn't I? Can we, just before I do show you the Hampton stripe, see what I mean? There's your red clutch. There's your blue clutch. There's the green one. There's the pink one. There's the yellow one. They all go with that fabric because they've all got this dark grey-black in them, which is quite lovely. Alright, so um, as I said, with this, with your stripes, 
just have a think about how you can use them. So I didn't, I wasn't that, well, you know what, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it does look okay that way. I'm just folding this up so we've got sort of roughly the same size without cutting it. So I can have my stripe go that way for my bow or I could have it go the other way. Either way, if you decide to run with one of the Hampton stripes, see it will work that way too. I was going to turn it, wasn't I? Now I'm actually thinking I want it to all go that way. Yeah, I think I do. So I won't have to fry my brain too much. Just follow the pattern. <laughs> no brain frying. But I tell you what, I do know, I do know that the, um, the glasses frame, these look fantastic in the stripes. They look really, really good. And the other thing is too, if you decide to buy your own fabrics to make up the blow, the bow clutch and the glasses case, um, easily, easily you'll have enough with half a metre of you might have your own black at home that you want to use, but half a metre is going to get you a couple of bow clutches and it's going to, for the lining and for the outside. So if you grabbed half a metre of the gold and half a metre of the stripe, you've, you've got absolutely plenty, um, plenty, plenty to work with. Right, let me see where we're at. Now I answered Fiona's question. Yes. Okay. So we're going to pop, pop these out of the way and we're going to sew one of these little glasses cases. Then we better draw a, a couple of prizes as well, haven't we? And do all of that. Oh, uh, one more thing too. If I just wanted to mention these today as well. Uh, when I've been talking to people about the Madison set, they... And, and they take it quite seriously as doing it as, a, as the, or I should say, medicine collection. The one thing they said, can we do a coin purse as well? Do whatever you like. You can do a coin purse as well. Um, but, oh, I think the actual coin purse is too big. Just me, but the coin purse frames, I think if I was going to do a coin purse, I'd actually, I would drop it down to the trinket um, and I would run it at this size. So, uh, and the, the frame that comes with the glasses case is antique gold. So if you wanted to run antique gold, it's the only one colour that we've got at the moment in, um, in the square frames. And it also comes in, that's the little trinket one. And you will have enough left, definitely, from your kit. So you, if you were going to grab one, of the kits, I would grab that as well, or perhaps you would like to grab the square frame on its own and grab one of those and you know that the colours match together so you can do someone a coin purse and the glasses case together. So many options to work with, but yeah, to put inside with everything else, Michelle might, I don't know Michelle, you might disagree with me. Uh, you, oh, sorry, all your messages have just come through because I had you turned off for a little bit while I was looking at the dimensions that Steve sent me through. Uh, Michelle might disagree with me, but I just think it's just it's a little bit big. I like this one. Oh, the other good thing about this one is that you get the pattern, uh, the template for a round base or a square base. So definitely I would run this as a square base option to put with this set because it's all... You know, it's angular and square and cute. Very, very cute and classy. I think the square one would look a bit better. All right, so I'm going to get the machine out so that we can have a play. I'm very upset about my button. I'll have to finish it and stick it on Facebook later. But I need to get the glue. Lesson learnt. A bit of glue. Now, for a little... Excuse me, Lima. Uh, for a very little project... I have a very big machine. <laughs> yeah, so I 
could get out of big machine. Um, all right, I'm going to put the zip away. As I said, the kits come with the zip in. There's also, you need a 30 centimetre zip, so you'll either need to buy the one metre zip with a pack of pulls now, or if you've got the kit, you'll get a 30 centimetre zip in with it. Um, yeah, so you will need some zip, so remember that. But very funky zips to do. Very funky. I'll put those over there. But yes, I'm, I'm trying to say, if you're buying a frame and you want to do the clutch, remember to grab the zip at the same time. I don't have, as it turns out, we discovered, a lot of 30 centimetre zips in stock. So, literally, after the show, oh, no, I can fix it. After the show, I'm going to pick up the zips for the um, the teal one. It's just a slight technical issue we forgot about yesterday. I am a little bit more toned up after moving about 200 bolts of fabric last week. Probably more than that. Steve hasn't been to this, hasn't been to our warehouse yet, so he'll see how much fabric I've moved. Okay, so coloured thread. Can't say I've got any orange on me right now, so I'm going to run black. My machine. Um, Benina. Oh, you don't need a machine either for our soiree on those days. It's all hand sewing. Uh, there might be. I might take along our little 475 just in case for emergencies, but everything is hand sewing. So it's just lovely. You just pack your favourite sewing bag, basic sewing kit. You bring your lunch, because we're doing morning tea, and you bring your favourite mug. And that's all, you know, COVID stuff. They'll be gluten-free. For those that need it, you won't need to tell us. There will be gluten-free options. I'm in charge of table decorations. <laughs> you, know that, you know, that's the good thing, right? <laughs> Just a little bit of a fun thing. That's all me. You know I love it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just going to be absolutely lovely. Absolutely lovely. And Garfield's not far. Um, it's easy to find. Oh, and there's a railway line, so you can actually, you know, catch a train if you really want to, if you don't want to drive. Uh, yeah, Judy, look, Judy Wood, absolutely. <laughs> when did she do that, Sharon? I missed it. Can I give her, I'll give her grief about it when I get off Facebook later. Was she so no hang on, I've done that, haven't I? Haven't I sewn with that cotton in the bottom? I'm sure I did. And, and if and if Natasha and I did it, well it just shows, you know, great minds <laughs> great minds think alike. Uh, I'm gonna pop I'm gonna pop some black on the top. Today, we should say today is brought to you by Benina because I'm not gonna be able to say it for much longer. We're down to the last two weeks. So my Benina mug was getting a workout with my banana tag. But, you know, I was in for a good time. Not a long time, four years. Uh, and I could be back. We don't know, do we? Depends if we decide to open up another shop. But I had a great chat yesterday with Deb at Sewing Bee in Baxter. And uh, no doubt I'll be hanging out at her banana hub a fair bit. And Mr. Tim is still flat out servicing machines. It doesn't change anything about Tim servicing your bananas. So just give me a buzz if you don't have his number. And he'll be here servicing my queue next week. Okay. So... I've popped in. I'm not really sure about the Constantinople Digest underneath my uh, sewing machine. It could be a little bit of a problem. Sorry, under the table. 
to smooth that that way. So you can see a little bit better. There you go. So with, with the glasses case, first thing we need to do is sew our pelon, pelon, our adhesive thin foam interfacing, batting, whatever you want to call it, just quickly onto our front and back panels. You, honestly, how many things could you do with these? I've got this little exercise book in my sewing room that just has a whole chapter on things I want to stick on a glasses case. And the reason I haven't shared them all with you yet is because, I'm going to let you in, that we actually have two other sizes. This is the small, and you'll see that on the packaging, um, and we have medium and large. So as they get bigger, I don't know, I may not even call the biggest one a um, glasses case. We might call it a scissor case. We'll have to see, but you know, as you go up in size, you've got more room to play with. I so want to do paper pieced hexagon flowers and things on them. Um, definitely some of the little sashiko designs. Margaret's got drop dead gorgeous embroidery to go on them. She has uh, designed for me, well, for us, a, uh, a beautiful, a beautiful callistamine stitchery. And for those that go way back with me, way back, um, sassy handbag? Yeah, it's going on a sassy. Right, we're measuring in a little bit at one end of these, and that is the little bit that goes. You know how I was saying I've got so many of these bags? Oh, it's because it's inside. This is a little bit in here. This little bit here? That's this little bit here. We need to measure in. And we need to pin. I'm going to do the lining first. So we need to sew just a little bit on this corner, just along here. And then we're going to sew around the short side and up the long side. And then we leave the rest of it open because that's going to be... <laughs> Emma said yesterday, I'm not... I have made a decision after a two hours sewing. I don't like sewing on the stool. <laughs> and she doesn't like sewing standing up. This is a skill that comes from the um, school of Natasha Facebook live shows. In other words, if Natasha can do it and she's a foot taller than me, I should be able to wing it. You can see I've got my walking foot on, even though I'm just doing two thicknesses of fabric, and that's just purely because I'm going to uh, come back through and do the bit with the batting in a minute. So there is just masses of stuff going on at the moment. Um, after the the show as well. I've just got to get on and chat to the Quilters Life girls because I'm a week late talking about um, its use by month. So we need to quickly talk about that and get that started. Use by month is a very, very important month in our lives of being organised and it always has to be, well it's, it's, it's used by fortnight really, it's always the last two weeks of March and that's to do with the time of year all sorts of different things but there's just so much going on did I tell you I'm in charge of the table decorations sorry just a bit excited and I found this I found the serviettes the table decorations are organized Cass has designed beautiful flyers so you'll see all of that so now I've got uh, my outside pieces on and you can just see how super quick that this part of the process is. And I suppose, you know, if you want to think about how you're going to use your time effectively, you might want to make a stack of these up for presents, to have in the cupboard, to sell for fundraising, whatever you want to use them for. This particular part of the process is quick, so you can do this at the machine, 
and then give them the press that they need and then it's a little project you can take with you anywhere to sew them into the frames. Alright, so with these, clip your corners. Not too much, but you're just going to get a nicer finish to them, so I'll do that one. Barbara, Barbara, Barbara. I've seen that. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, if you are going, if you are going, if you are in, sorry, if you are in Queensland, you need to know that Margaret will have Margaret's Fabrics at uh, AQC. She will be there in May because she's got AQC this year with Lucky Devils. So you can have a chat to her about that while she's there and organize it with her and sure we'll come up it's so weird just being able to say that now isn't it i'm turning through my lining so that it's right side out grab your tailors all or uh, your pokey stick your sate stick your knitting needle your crochet hook whatever you use or a little pin just to ease out your corners Give it a little, another little press with the iron just so that it's nice and flat. And I'm not worrying about the outside so much at this uh, this stage. I'll just do this quickly. Do a little press. Now, the instructions say, and, and um, Michelle's not getting the wrap for this at all. Well, not the wrap, but getting, getting to say that she did these because we had these kind of done as well. So from when we did, uh, we had little kits, didn't we, for the glasses cases. The instructions are correct, is what I'm going to say. But there's just a couple of other little tips that I want to run by you, just so you know. When you come to sit your lining inside uh, the outer side of your glasses case, pop, pop, your two seams together and treat them like you would if you were piecing a quilt. So abut them up against each other, give them that little roll that you do with your fingers and use pins or your wonder clips to hold that in place. And you're just going to get a nicer finish on that seam there uh, because that, that little seam there is that seam there and you want that to be nice and flat because it's literally going to fold back on itself so make sure that those little seams abut each other and they sit nicely together for some reason and I, it's probably because it, it's irrelevant because it's going to literally double up you could press your seams flat as well and that's probably in the instructions, but it's not going to matter as long as you get this whole area here nice and flat. So what they, in, what the instructions say, and if you're sewing by hand, absolutely do it. It says to sit all of this inside. Yeah, I've got to get this little, little pokey corner in down here. Get all that in there. And then it says to sew right round. Now, if you're doing it by hand or you are an experienced machinist, all good and well. You're going to go along here, across here, right round here, and down the other side. Or you can start on the side and you can pivot. Oh, you know what I've forgotten to do, don't you? Forgot to leave the opening, as always, in the lining. Don't worry, it's in the instructions. I'll come back to it. So you're going to pivot at this end, but if you're a little bit not sure about that or if you're giving it to a little person to sew that hasn't done a lot of sewing yet, I've just put myself in that category, haven't I? I found, I found another way to do it. Um, we were here. I found another way to do it. I sewed yesterday straight across the top first. I know but it, I did. Emma's turned my starting stitch off 
What happened to that? You know those rules, the farmer's gate rules. Leave it the way you found it. Shouldn't say that. Okay. As part of my out of Benina next week, <laughs> I'm out visiting three people who wish to buy from Chandler's Cottage a one of these beautiful things, a 375. So um, if you want to add yourself to the list, let me know. <laughs> let me know because uh, I'm out and about with the machines. Because even though I'm not going to be selling them anymore, I'm still looking after the Benina girls this week. All right, I've got that sewn across the top. Now I'm going to sew down this side. I know you're going, what on earth is she doing? Oh, there's nothing here. Hoverfoot. I just want to turn back on my locking stitch. Thank you. There we go. That's better. Then I come down here as far as I can go because it is a little bit tricky getting into that little V at the bottom. So I go as far as I can down here. Right, and then we'll do a we'll finish off. Yes, Christine, stud earrings are awesome to use. I'll get to that, all the cool ways of sewing uh, the frame in. And they are brilliant. Uh, we tried to get in. We we found um, out of Japan some screw ones, Chris, that worked really well. But the company, as with many things, kind of vanished with COVID. So I'm down the other side. And I just go as far as I can while I can still operate the machine flat. Sorry, the machine, heavens, the, the purse flat. So now I'm... You can see I'm nearly I'm nearly as far as I need to go, but it's getting a little bit hard to get in here, and I can't quite see where this piece is at the bottom. Oh, sorry, the stitches are where I stopped. So now I turn over to the other side, and I can easily get my needle up into that V. So it was too hard to do to pivot. From the, well, it's tricky to do to pivot from the other side. Now, obviously, this is not something that I would bother even trying to attempt to explain in the pattern. So we've left the pattern as it was previously, and then I can do the same with this one. I can turn it over, and I can easily see where my stitches stopped up here, and I can get my needle right down into that V. So I've left it at that, and of course, if you were sewing these by hand, not a problem. So I'll just put this down here. And now I've managed to get my needle right into there without without the risk of you know getting any of my seam allowance or anything stuck. You can see I had a little bit curl over, but that's not going to mean anything. And that's all that's I've got myself right down into that V. Okay. So now we I need to go back because I did the classic. All right, so Christine says, are you all reading what she's writing? $4 from Kmart for a, K, for a card of eight pairs. Brilliant. Okay, so studs work really well. The other thing that I um, was using until I got, got out all of my expensive studs, so maybe I'll put those uh, back in the, the cupboard now, Christine. Um, mm -hmm is I had little bits of, I cut up a rubber and used little thumbtacks for mine to hold them in. With with our big purse frames, the metal ones, what I find, there's my we'll hold there, so I'll turn that through. What I've seen a lot of girls do, and I use the studs, but I've seen a lot of girls do, they actually overstitch, whip stitch for want of a better word, overstitch their frames to their bags first and it's uh, Sharon have I seen you do that I've seen someone do it and um, it just holds it all in place really nicely so those big ones the treasure purse ones uh, flower tote and it just it holds it all there 
while you're then going back and doing a really nice, you know, nice, neat, tidy um, backstitch to pop them in. I don't know what that resembles. What does it resemble? Oh, our little um, iPad holders that we made ages ago. Okay, nearly there. So I'm just going to push all this out into shape. One thing that I do find really hard doing, or challenging doing the frames, is, is the work that you you put your hands through, holding and gripping, you know, um, onto one. I, I started a treasure tote way back when we, Kate and I were doing craft and cook shows, and um, I've never finished it. It's got ombre ruched flowers on it and every now and then I pull it out and it, it just hurts my hands and then I think ahead to actually having to sew the frame in. So I think anything that you can do to make it easier to to hold on is the is really, really good. And one thing that I have found that makes it super easy uh, with the thicker foam, not so much this the thin pallet for the glasses cases, but when you're using uh, the rubber foam batting for the bigger bags, like the treasure tote, I'll show it to you when I'm finished it, is uh, to do a big top stitch right on the edge of your bag where you're going to insert it up into the frame. And it's, it's just enough to flatten out that bit that goes in but you need it right up on the top an eighth of an inch in and it will squish down and, and flatten out that bit that you're putting up into the frame. Uh, if it's up far enough it doesn't impact the look you choose a thread colour that matches the bag fabric and you can't see it through the holes or anything of course when you uh, pop that lip up inside the frame. If you haven't, if you don't, if you haven't seen what these frames look like, we shouldn't just assume everyone has, should we? So when you get inside these, you can see that the outside that you, you actually see when you've made your purse frame up sits lower than the inside. And so you can easily get in, if I hold it there against my machine, can easily get into all of these holes to do your back stitch. So your purse lip, which I'm going to do in a minute, sits up in here. And then from the front, you can see all of the holes the back stitch through, and your needle will go through to the back because this outer bit is sitting higher. So it it's very it's ingenious when you think about it, whoever in whoever came up with them. But we all know they go back a very, very long way, a couple of hundred years they started making them by hand, beautiful purses that were all embroidered, petty point canvas, tapestry, all of that. Oh no, I just nearly took, I nearly gave away. I oh, gave away what I'm doing. Again. Anyway, for those of you that can make it on that weekend, I can't, I can't tell you how special it's going to be for me because, you know, we lost our 10th anniversary uh, exhibition at the gardens. We lost our beautiful retreat in the Dandenongs. And it, uh, to me, it, it wasn't the loss of the time and the organisation and all of that that, that we lost. It, it's, um, it was the opportunity that we were going to have to put together all of our friend, Chandler's Cottage friends. that That's what it's all about. And so, you know, this is even bigger. This is the same for Karen and Margaret and myself to be able to put a whole heap of our, our friends together in the hall is going to be awesome. That's my little opening in my lining that I had to unpick. You know, Emma sews this up on purpose so that she has a perforated line of stitches to see perfectly to sew up. And I must say, that's going to sew up together really, really nicely. Just if I, as long as I get rid of that bit of white thread. Okay, so this is my glasses case without its frame. And now what will happen is this will slide in 
there. Oh, it's so hard to get it to hold to show you. So that's going to slide in there. So you can see that little bit that we sew first. That Emma and I have painstakingly played with this. Oh, I'm laughing now, but I wasn't at the time. Painstakingly played with that so that the little base hinge of the frame sits just snugly above it. And uh, then it will run up the other side on the other side. And then the same across here, the dimensions are set up for you, as I said, so that it will wrap around the end of the hinge up the other end. So I think that's going to look, I think that's going to look quite ever so funky. I've got a friend called Carmel McEwen who has glasses, I'm sure, that will match that class's case. <laughs> so I'm sort of thinking, hmm, who do I know that has funky glasses that I need to make one of those for so that it, uh, <laughs> so that she's got one to match her glasses. All right. Oh, sorry girls, there you go. So I just want to show you again. So you can see that little bit there, that's the bit that I want you to do that sets flat and you'll be able to squish up that uh, your bag up into that corner and this is your little Y seam down the bottom that we just did so you can pivot on there if you're doing it by hand you can whisk around it with the sewing machine but that little trick I just showed you you might find comes in really handy one more thing when you actually start sewing I suggest that you start up in this corner because you really want to make sure that it's sitting up nice and snug so that the dimensions all work perfectly out this way, up and down that way. So one little tip as well for you, when you've got your thread ready, knot your thread and just sew it through this top corner here and take that top corner up into your frame first. I have lost the ability to do things in reverse. There we go. So, and that's just going to pull it Pull it up into there, just pull it right up into there and start stitching there and go outwards from there and then down the other side. And then you know you've got that corner really nicely tucked up, nice and neat and snug underneath, up in here, right, so that it all sits beautifully for you. I could talk Madison Collection all all day long. I really, really could, but we but we won't because you need to all go off and uh, get cracking. Um, I need to ask a question. Oh, Judy, both days are the same format, yes, but there are different projects on each day. So if you were to come to both days, you would walk away at the end of the weekend with your tummy full of two morning teas. Um, you will see two talks from, two different talks from both, from the three of us. So we'll give a little bit of a talk each day about ourselves and where we've come from and what we've learned and what we're doing at the moment. And you would walk away with six beautiful kits. And the kit values are at least $15 each included in the day. So you're going to walk away with um, three from the Saturday and three different ones from the Sunday and two days tuition from the three of us. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Very cool door prizes too. Did I mention the table decorations? I'm sorry, I'm being silly now. Um, yes, if you... Oh, Petra, everything. I've used everything. Um, I will answer your question. If you, really, if you wanted to come to both days and you did live a fair way away, have a look on the map of where Garfield is. It is not that far from a lot of major towns and really nice ones. So within 10, 15 minutes, you've got a lot of lovely big you know, on the fringe of Melbourne suburbs that you could stay in. Or as I said, you can catch the train out. Just catch the train out to Garfield. Very, very easily. Um, we would ferry you from the train station. Did I volunteer, Rob, for that already? Have now. In the Honda. We're in, in the Honda. We'll do that. Petra, in terms of thread, I grabbed whatever matched really well. And that went from everything from double strand of Masterpiece, from my little Masterpiece uh, thread boxes that we've got in my little clear ones. Um, if you're doing the pink ones, um, 
you know, there's dusky pinks in King Tut. One, there's a couple of colours that are really nice. You know, the antique gold King Tuts, they're going to go with everything that's got metallic gold and they match the frames really well. So if you want to know what numbers they are, just let me know and I can I can let you know which ones they are. Um, I've sewn on with metallic before. I've sewn on with stranded embroidery cotton and hand quilting cotton, anything. Anything will work. Exactly the same as what we do with sewing on our... Um, shopping tote handles, the nice big shoulder strap ones as well. Who said cookie? Someone said cookie. Are there cookies? Yes, there are cookies. Uh, Karen's in charge of the cookies. <laughs> there is cookies. Oh, no, Petra, good news on cookie cutters. Thank you. Email me, email me. That's very good news. Um, I'm actually catching up with Miss Kate tomorrow night. Not the Kate you know, Phil's Kate. You haven't met my Kate yet, my uh, my Phil's Kate, Kate, who just happens, you know, to have a patisserie certificate. Uh, he's not using it at the moment, but she's in charge of decorating the Chandler's Cottage birthday cake for our 20 years birthday this year. So there is a cake consult happening tomorrow night and it will involve the cookies, Petra. So I'm very, very happy to hear that. Nancy, where have you been? What are you doing? No, I did not, Fiona. Oh, which way? Which, 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 which bag? Oh, the one I took to Port Campbell? Yes. Where's that? I don't know. Do you want me to find it? I'll find it for you. The new blue fabric that I showed earlier on, uh, it, I would say that it is, it is uh, if it's not already up on the website, it will be, and it will definitely be tagged for our Saturday afternoon show. Um, if you want to email me, Christine, I will uh, let you know when it's there and I can send you the link. All right, who's asleep? Nancy, why are you asleep? Oh, you fell asleep again, Nance. We've got to have a strong coffee before the show <laughs> when you listen to the dulcet tones. Um, all right, so Barbara, let's talk to Margaret about coming to Queensland. Yes, the Carlton Wear. It's a gorgeous plate. It's um, it's got fox gloves on it. It's really nice. All right, Fiona, you need to play with your Frixian pens. All right, I'm going to draw our prizes now. So I'll just go in and find our number generator, and we'll get that done, and then you guys can chuff off and get some sewing done if you've got time this afternoon if you've all got dinner organized i haven't i can either go do this organized or we have to organize dinner it doesn't always all happen so if there is a night where we don't cook dinner in our house um it's show night did i uh completely i did completely confuse you didn't i Sorry about that, but moving to Wednesday, but we weren't, we weren't ready. I had so much stuff all over the place. All right, so, uh, and the medicine had to be completed. Now, the prizes, I'm drawing two today because there were, that's our new phone that sounds like a cricket. Hang on, I'll shut the door. And I will, now it's a quiet cricket. I will answer it in a minute. So we drew these prizes and we had two, going back, we had the two purple packs there out on their way to Yvonne, Yvonne Collinson and Josie Wilson. Then we had the old gold pack. That's off to Therese Parry this week. They are at the door to go out the door. And then I found another purple pack. And because we had our big sale week last week, and there were lots and lots of orders. I thought we should have two prizes, so I've got another one of the purple packs. I'm going to draw that first. Uh, and then the numbers, look, I've done it. I've got it all here because there's no one else to help me. The numbers we're drawing between are 3617 and 3688. Yeah, a lot of orders. And they don't include subscriptions. So if you're in being mindful, uh, you will see that your orders have gone through this week for your next installment. I haven't included clubs because I didn't really think that was fair. It wasn't fair, was it? I don't think so. Because it's not so much an order from a show. 
So I took those out, 3, 6, 8, 8. So, can I hold it around that way? I can, can't I? You can see that, okay? It is 3, 6, 7, 7. So whoever 3, 6, let me hold it down here. Yeah. 3, 6, 7, 7. So that's our first number. Let me write that down. Because you know what happens if I don't write it down? I have to watch the whole Facebook show back to find where I talked about the prizes. So wherever 3677 is, this is yours. It's coming your way. Then our second prize, if you remember, was the last of our beautiful Tuscan scarves. So this is going to set you up, whoever gets it, uh, for autumn. So this is the last of these. And that's going out as our next prize. So shall we push, will we push the button again? We'll push the button again. Can you see the, oh no, hang on, let me, let me, there you go. So I've got 3621. And if you, if you're wondering oh, if I, if you were 3688, I'm never going to win because it's the last number. Josie Wilson's number was the last of the range. So the generator actually generated it to the last number. 3621 is the next one. Right, so uh, the next prize will go from orders in from 2 o'clock this afternoon and I'm going to cut it off at 1 minute to 2 on Saturday because at 2 o'clock on Saturday we will have our next show. So the next prize that we've got for our door prize, yep, I'm organised, I have, is this beautiful little pack of liberties. So we've had this before but I've got one left. So you've got five beautiful fat quarters there. We've got all of these in stock, except for this little one here. So I bought a bundle for us to use for prizes. Um, and I've got these ones in stock, but look at their little cutie on the end. So that prize I will draw, and I'll do it at the start of the show on Saturday because it will be just finished. I said, Jill, Jill put in an order at one to two or something for the last deadline. I thought that was, I thought that was very sneaky. So I've got a note here from Natasha through Facebook, through WhatsApp and through Messenger that she wants the Matilda, she wants the Madison collection for the UK. So Michelle, you're going international. There you go. Well, Fiona, if you can't watch Saturday, it wouldn't mean you can't watch if you're a retreat at a retreat. Isn't that the best place to watch? Have a lovely time at the retreat. Uh, you can sneak a peek. Um, maybe when you're sitting up in bed having chocolate and a cuppa on the evening of the retreat or when you get home but um, if you wanted to catch us later on all right so I look I don't know what that is Louise but thank you um, oh that's right Fiona you love Port Campbell too all right everybody I'm going to take off now and uh, I need to go and grab these zips for you for our pink and teal kits so for the clutch so I'm going to go and do that Michelle Fisher once again thank you very very much for sharing your beautiful Madison collection with us and you will see in the pattern everyone that Madison is actually Michelle's granddaughter that she named the collection after and we're very very grateful well done to you and congratulations again for winning our prize last year for the challenge and now we can all share Madison collection and have lots of fun with it so thank you very much and thank you everyone for joining me this afternoon and I look forward to seeing you on Saturday afternoon at two o'clock I'm going to whiz out now and have a chat with the girls from AQL so I'll pop that little post up later and don't forget don't order the Madison collection if you are in a course life or um, you uh, I haven't shown it to you or you're thinking of joining all right let me just let me let me just do this for you so if you did want to have a look at it, it is at quiltersite.podia.com. Um, so that's where you join for $10 a month and you will be able to go in and grab your Madison. But while you're there, there'll be there's stacks of other stuff and uh, we're doing the bamboo bag in there next week too with lots of ideas. Okay. Thank you again. Thanks everyone. And I'll see you on Saturday. All right. Bye.